Hi and welcome to Scott's Inverts. I'm Scott. These are the inverts and if you're not subscribed hit that subscription button for me. Show me the love. Today we are looking at the rear horn baboon. The Ceratogyrus Darlingi. An absolutely beautiful beautiful spider. So let's get in to today's care video. So the Ceratogyrus Darlingi, the rear horn baboon is coming to us all the way from Zimbabwe and Mozambique. Now these two countries actually border one another and our spider is found across the whole entire areas of both of these countries. Now they mainly mainly thrive around the desert savanna areas where, where rain comes down in the form of monsoon winds all the way from the Indian Ocean in October and all the way through to March. And the rest of the period of these countries is a dry se season where we can expect to see temperatures up to 32 degrees Celsius, but when it's when the rainy season's here, those temperatures will drop down all the way to 18. So our spider is going to be very, very robust when it comes to temperatures, but we also need to take into consideration that it's only at minus 18 under severe conditions, and it's only up at 32 again under severe conditions. And with those monsoon rains coming in from the Indian Ocean, we want to be creating a humidity environment for our spider, but not all the time, because that spider also relies heavily on the savanna periods of dryness throughout the year as well. So we want to be creating a mixed humidity gradient. Now, the way we achieve this is to not flood out the enclosure but just to pour water down to the insides of the enclosure around the edges I mean, you'll see the water go all the way down to the bottom and once those first two inches at the bottom are nice and damp we've done our job and then what we do is we allow that enclosure to dry out absolutely completely and then we do the same procedure again so we want to be doing that once every four to six weeks to try and recreate almost what goes on in the wild we don't have to be looking into perfect temperatures a perfect amounts of water or anything like that unless we're going to breed this species but to keep him nice and happy or keep her nice and happy that's what we do now the enclosure that we need to be looking at is these guys are an obligatory burrower. What that means is they feel the urge to burrow. Now out in the wild they're going to burrow down quite deep, down to those damp and moister areas because they need to get away from that surging sun up above. But in our home we don't have to worry about making it as deep as spiderlings if we keep the area that where we can put in our spiderling into the spiderling pot nice and damp nice and moist and if we fill up those pots those little pots of spiderlings come in about three quarters of the way that allows our spiderling to go in there burrow down and pop out when she feels safe to do so in fact what she'll do is she'll burrow down and she'll web up the area the web will come up and out of the burrow and when food goes onto that web she'll come flying out and take that food straight down these are a phenomenal phenomenal hunter no, so food consumption, I kind of feed spiderlings, fruit flies, and then just increase the size of prey depending on their abdomen. So while they're small, fruit flies, when they go bigger, you can have a look at dubias and stuff like that. If you've got some hissing cockroach colonies going around, then they're also good, but don't feed this girl the adults they are too big. You want to kind of look at half the size of the female's abdomen or your spider's abdomen, and that's about the maximum size of food that you want to put in. Now, I do keep a water dish in with these, but I've never, ever, ever seen a, seen a Darlingi drink from a water bowl. Um, hopefully, one of you guys at home has. I'd be really interested to find out. Now, the growth rate on this species is very, very fast. They do a lot of growing in the first year, so expect to see some big changes in your spiderling in the first year. And after two years, you can actually get a female tarantula up to a whopping four years inches in size and these spiders the adult females will grow to around five inches i have heard of the odd one being a little bit bigger but mine's around five inches so we're going to stick for that today the males a little bit under males can go to four maybe four and a half inches the males can mature after 12 months 12 to 18 months and they survive around three to four years the females can mature as little as three to four years, which is absolutely phenomenal. And they live for around 10 to 12 years. There is some reports, and some of my friends have actually stated that their 
their rear horn darling is are actually reaching 15 to 20 years which is an incredible difference in what the textbooks are saying and we'll find out more as mine progresses and mine gets older now their temperament if you think along the lines of the obt we're we're along those same lines with the rear horn baboon as well being a baboon spider they are very very defensive they can flick their legs up just as much as an obt they are an old world their venom is pretty strong so be very very careful when you're rehousing these guys taking the lid off to feed and all the rest of it generally if they're down in that burrow that's pretty much where they're going to stay until you put a food item on that web and then they're going to come flying out they also will web up like an obt so if you give these guys a little bit a few fair few anchor points in and around that enclosure they're going to make full use of those as well so just to finalize what we have here is an absolutely stunning species of spider but it is a pet hold we're not going to see our spider out and about every day in fact what we're going to see is her maybe coming out for food if she's hungry coming outside of her den outside of her burrow majority of the time she is actually going to be right down there inside but when she does come out with that rear horn on the back of her she's absolutely stunning and it just gives another dimension to our hobby with that horn in fact if you guys know why she has that horn on the back of her her body let me know down in those comments i was kind of thinking maybe it was for courtship um when these spiders first started going out and about type of thing maybe the horn came from a species that this spider evolved from i don't know i'd like to hear your guys opinion on it and um see what you guys think it is just something that's absolutely crazy and we don't really see it in any other genus. It's just absolutely phenomenal and I'm really proud to have this girl in our collection. Anyway, let's take a look at the setup. So guys, this is the setup. We have around 8 inches of substrate copying, potting compost and it's in a 20 side, 20 back by 30 high Komodo enclosure kindly donated by Abram to the channel. Thank you very much absolutely perfect we have the compulsory water dish in there along with some dry moss um and a mesh lid and there she is up in the corner not very happy at all with me because i'm just rehousing her but you know girl it's it will get better for you but we have we have the substrate we have the dry moss going around the back we have that tall piece of cork bark at the back as well just there is where I've made a start a burrow with my finger. So if she wants to burrow down, hopefully she'll go into that corner where it's already started off for her. We have anchor points down the left hand side, which is that cork bark, dry moss, a water dish, plenty of substrate in there. Now what that cork bark piece at the back will give her, it gives her the opportunity to either go inside there, live a borally, live a borally as well as having a burrow going down into the soil but she can also live terrestrial and create a massive web castle in there as well because these are baboon tarantulas and baboons can mainly live fossorially but um, a lot of them do live arboreally and terrestrial as well so i like to give my spider the opportunity to kind of choose where she wants to go and always have that water dish in there nicely topped up and then when we're making that enclosure nice and damp for the rainy season, what we do is that back piece of glass there is just pour water against it and watch it come up at the bottom of the substrate. And once that substrate at the bottom gets about around two to three inches is, is around damp, that's when we know we've created the correct environment for our spider and then we allow it to completely dry out. But fingers crossed, she webs up all this makes a lovely burrow and lives in this uh, enclosure forever and a day boom absolutely gorgeous wasn't she she is an absolute stunner really looking forward to her kind of burrowing down maybe it's making some webbing across those anchor points that we've put in there for her as well she is a real real stunner she is an adult female so if you've got a mature male out there um please get in contact with me maybe we could do something um, something along the lines of a breeding project going on there um, i hope you everybody's doing really really well thank you to all that attended 
last Tuesday's live stream for the birthday bash with myself and Tarantula Rookie. We had an absolutely awesome time. And I can't thank you guys enough and I can't thank Tarantula Rookie enough for putting that video together as well for me. Absolutely amazing. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and as always we shall see you again on the next one.